الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله الكبير We are indeed grateful to our Creator for arranging this for us and, and Alhamdulillah we are here and God has given us another chance that, that by um, glorifying and, and getting closer to Him we are actually achieving a, a huge uh, uh, benefit to our souls and to ourselves. And so it's, it's uh, something that we should be grateful because all of these are Uh, by divine providence, and, and we are not able to do this on our own. Uh, <clears throat> throughout our lives, we go through a lot of different hardship, and, and God knows that, and He helps us, and He pulls us through. And so, uh, the idea is that we have to stick with God and put our trust in Him. So whatever He decides is, is okay with us, and we should never, never be uh, in a state of objection to God's system, and, uh, and again, as I said, put our trust in Him and be grateful to His blessings and His favors that He bestowed upon us. And this is, <coughs> this is a great favor that he's, he's done right now to us, that we're actually able and willing to do this. Uh, it's not just by accident. This is, again, from God's generosity and His grace that we are actually able to do this, and the will and the love of, uh, that we have in our hearts for God is still there, and so we are able to, to actually uh, observe this, this uh, Friday prayers, which is so important to us. Uh, what I wanted to, to discuss with you, these are uh, a series of ayahs, a series of verses in the, in the um, uh, towards the end of Surah 77, I'm sorry, Surah 25, which is called Statue of God. And, uh, and God is telling us, uh, again, this, this goes back to this point of repentance to God. In verse 7, he tells us that, Exempted are those who repent, attain faith, and lead a righteous life. Then for these, God will change their sins into credit. And God is all forgiving, all merciful. And this, this, is, this ayah is, is uh, probably the most... The most uh, Uh, glad tidings that God actually has given us. Uh, that means that people who change their ways, these are people who were sorry for what they did, and they repent to God, that means that they go back to God, but they do not repeat the same thing over again. Okay? Uh, they have made a promise to God that they do not repeat the same mistakes that they did before. And so these are those people who are repenting. These are the penitent people. And so God is telling us now that the sins will be changing to credit. I mean, I can't even imagine this. Okay, that means that their past is completely wiped out. Okay, they have a different past now. For us, you know, it's, we know so much about, so little about time. And so much of this dimension of time is unknown to us. But here God is telling us that your past can, can be actually changed. So the, the action that you take now in the future actually can change your past. Can you imagine that? And so this, this is a huge blessing. And, and the, 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 the amount of good news which is actually embedded in this verse, which is verse 70 of Surah 25, is, is, is uh, boundless. I cannot even put a, a boundary on this, uh, how, how much of the good news this is. Uh, and it says, and whoever repents and leads a righteous life, okay, he then indeed has returned to God and has made a real turnaround. So this is again goes back to repentance. Okay. It goes back again to this idea of repentance. That if you lie and you now you're sorry that you lied, but you will not lie in the future. That is a real repentance to God. Okay. That person, everything that he has done, which he has done in the past, is going to be changed. And not only is it going to be changed, they are going to be changed into credit. 
I need the past that that person lived because of this repentance. All the bad deeds are going to change into good deeds. So that person quits lying and propagating falsehood after this repentance from that sin. Everything, every lie and falsehood that he has propagated in the past is going to also change into, into truthfulness. I mean, just think about this a little bit. I, I, I can't even, you know, I can't even, we can't even describe this, these verses, these two verses that we just read. The amount of uh, boundless love that God has for us. And that person has to humble himself or herself in front of God. The humility that that person offers to God by repenting and acknowledging that that sin was, was that deed that that person has done was sinful. And then God says, and these are those who do not bear false witness. And when they come across nonsense, they move on with dignity. They don't listen to falsehood. They do not listen to nonsense. They move. And it doesn't matter if these people are our friends. I've like said this so many times. It doesn't matter. Change the topic. Okay. So. <laughs> and these are those when reminded of the road signs, do not treat them as though they, they are deaf and blind. Okay? Some people, when we talk about these mathematics of the Quran, they're already bored. Completely jaded. They don't care. So what? What does this have to do with us? I want to bring us a billion dollars. That's how they think. That's how they... they they think that success is. Success is having, you know, a large family, and as I said, the kids are, you know, tall and, and, and muscular and everything, and the daughters are, you know, 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, That's what they think success is. So what God says differently, okay? He says, look, when God's signs are, are shown to you or reminded, you do not treat them as though you were deaf and blind. You listen. And these are those who say, Our Lord, let our spouses and children be sources of happiness for us and make us leaders of the God-fearing ones. So they want also righteous children. They don't want unrighteous children. Okay? That's a successful life. If, if you read the Quran, you see how much, for example, Jacob suffered because of unrighteous children. Okay? And they were boasting about that they are, you know, they are strong and everything and they can take care of Joseph. Remember that? So they were big guys. But they were unrighteous people. It doesn't matter. So that becomes a source of happiness for, for the parents. And God says they have deserved exalted mansions because of the steadfastness, and they receive therein greetings of peace. It's the place that there's no argument, there's no malice, there's no nonsense. And that's the peacefulness of this place that God is describing as paradise to us. And this is because of the steadfastness. It means they, they, were, they were patient. They persevered. They didn't, they didn't question God's wisdom all the time. They had their trust in God. And they were happy with the way he was running the universe. And God... So they abide 
there in forever, the best abode in the best position. Right? And then God says here, the last one now, to those who are on the other side of the fence. These are the guys who make all kinds of claims and they reject the truth. Who are these guys? Say, my Lord will not care if it were not for your claims. Because your claims is falsehood. You're claiming falsehood. However, once you reject the truth, then you will soon see the inevitable consequences. You are going to hold responsible. You're going to be held responsible for that untrue statement that, that, that you say. People cannot do that. People cannot just go, go around and, and propagate falsehood. God is, has created everything based on the truth. Falsehood has to vanish with those people who are propagating falsehood. That's what God is saying. He says, once you reject the truth, I'm going to be here. I'm not going to go away because you don't like it. So the inevitable consequences are coming as a consequence of your own deeds. Because what you did, you claim things that did not exist. You didn't like the truth. So God is telling you, you guys didn't do this. It's because of your claims. And you claim falsehood. So all of those things that we just read is going to be completely forbidden for them, prohibited. They're not going to achieve it. They're not going to achieve any of these good news that God has given them, has given us. Right? So you see, even if there is a, there is, it doesn't matter how much falsehood there is in there, God is going to wipe it out. God be glorified. Because falsehood cannot generate anything. It's against God's system. God's system is, is God says, he is extender. His mercy is ever expanding. Everything that God has is expanding. It's not contracting. And falsehood cannot generate anything. Only truth can generate things. That's why he tells us here that, look, I wouldn't care if you didn't claim these things. Now that you claim it, I have to tell you that the consequences are heavy. You have great consequences coming your way. You can't get away with this. That's not allowed. In a system which works like this, it's a beautiful system. It's a system which is based on the truth. And that system would not tolerate negative forces like this. Mm -hmm. Going in the opposite direction that starts with that, that doesn't do any good. <clears throat> so we read those verses that says, well, okay, these guys, they, they are these kind of people. Do not tolerate lies, they do not tolerate nonsense. They go along with God's system, which is the truth. And anything which is the opposite of that, which doesn't generate anything, and is going to be wiped out, because it has no foundation, no basis, then that person who is actually promoting that kind of lifestyle, is going to suffer the inevitable consequences of his and all that. So again, as I said, all of these, 70 through 76, everything I read was the ultimate good news that God actually gives somebody, can give somebody, and was given to us. With a warning in 77, The warning of 77 is that once somebody is trying to promote falsehood, 
is denying the truth, is claiming non-existent things. That person is going to suffer the consequence of his or her own deeds. And God is not responsible for it. God is one who's enforcing that kind of thing because that's what existence is. Existence is the truth. Falsehood is non-existing. And people who are promoting that are going to be non-existent too. And that's what hell is. The ideal is a state of non-existent and, and the only thing that that person is cognizant of is that state of existence which is non-existent. Okay. It's very difficult to explain it. So again, as I said, this is what I wanted to show you. And now in the second one, in the second record, I'm going to just talk about 2577 and you see what comes out of it and what God is warning us about. Okay? So let's let's finish this record. Allah will give you. So Khan Rabbi Al Adi, Allah Kabir, Allah Kabir. Allah Kabir. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير الليل مغضوب عليهم الله الكبير Okay, so now we go to, uh, we'll go ahead and close this one. Minimize it. And we'll go to, what is it? There it is. Okay, we we'll go to this one. And here, again, we we'll go to our, the same chapter, the statute book in 9127. And so this is again one of those things that that God is telling us that this is one of God's signs. And now let, let's see how that actually tie in with with the truth and how God advocates the truth and 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 causes falsehood to vanish. So now the nineteenth positional additive prime is six nineteen, which is the hundred fourteenth prime number. And note that 114 is the number of chapters in the Quran. Okay. So let us let's, let us look at the following table. So I regenerated this table. We've seen this before, but I did it again. The 19th position at the prime is is uh, 619, and so that means that this is this is a uh, a product, another product is is the result of a a uh, prime process index. Okay, so that prime is actually 521, and the index of that number is 98. Now, if you add 98 plus 521, you get 619. Okay, so from the table, from the above table, we've seen this before, but I'm just going to remind people. From the above table, we know that Surah 19 has 98 verses. So the prime of these two numbers, namely 19 and 98, we yield this number 1862. So let us look at the following table. 1862, which is the index of lonely Gaussian prime, and the index of Gaussian prime is actually 2577. Remember now, chapter 25 has 77 verses. So it's lonely Gaussian prime, and Gaussian prime is 49891. Uh, so recall that chapter 25. Uh, the statute book has 77 verses. Now let us go there and examine the verse, i.e. 2577. We just read it, okay? So we'll go ahead and examine it again. Say, my Lord would not care if it were not for your claims. However, once you reject the truth, and somebody told you 9 has 127 verses and you rejected it. So it doesn't matter. You don't care. That was, your, that was your attitude towards this. Then you will soon see the inevitable consequences. Those people are going to suffer. 
I don't know how they're going to suffer, but they're going to suffer the consequences. That's what God is telling us. So what I did was I, I have these numbers here that it's in the Quran you know, too, so I just copied that one from here. Mm -hmm. You see that orange number, 748, that are underlined? That's the key here. The underlined number 748 is the key. So 748 is actually the count of number of verses in the, in the Revelation order, okay? Only in the in the uh, uninitial surahs. So 25 is an uninitial surah. Okay. So now, now remember, this this is this is completely independent of chapter nine. Why? Because chapter nine was 113th surah that was to be. This is at the very beginning. Okay. So we go back there to to the other one that I had, and I go back to the beginning of this. Just to show it to you, okay, so so you won't have any questions in your mind. Uninitial surah was revealed, 42nd revealed overall. That means that this chapter was revealed before chapter 9. As chapter 9 was the 113th chapter was revealed. Okay. So again, we minimize this guy. So uh, go back to this one. Okay. So here I say that the underline number 748 is the key. This is the number of verses revealed in the uninitial surahs. Okay, so it's the order of revelation, not the completion. Okay. And 748, lonely prayer happens to be non So you See how God designed it? Okay. The number of verses in chapter 25, which is 77, is actually generated by the 19th positionally added the prime, which is 98 plus 521, which is 619. It's generated by that. Okay. By virtue of this interim that's a relation, which is 2577, which is named the South, South uh, Gaussian Prime, and 1862, which is 19 times 98, which is the index of the, of the uh, lonely Gaussian. Okay. Now, what happens is that the 748, which is the order of revelation of that verse, is actually happens to be the index of lonely prime nine one two seven. So all of these things are interconnected and they're generating each other. Okay? And this is as though all of these numbers are surrounding us, which is the truth. And if one claims otherwise, okay, if one claims to the contrary of this, then that person is going to soon find out about the inevitable consequences. That's what God is promising that person. Okay. So all of the good news that came before this verse are going to be completely prohibited and forbidden for that person. Okay. So I'm going to stop here and we'll finish our journey. I'm going to get here.